So I picked up this uh, rework combo solder station online a couple of weeks ago. My old rework station was starting to mess up. The heat gun temperature was starting to fluctuate on its own. And I kept having to mess with it to make it work right. So I figured I'd pick up another one because chances were when I was in the middle of a project, it'd go up on me and I'd be left without until I got another one. So I got looking around online and I came across this. It's a no-name brand, just a, a number, 853D. And there was actually quite a few of these online, uh, varying prices, different sellers. And I looked at them for a couple of days and I was ready to buy one for $70 and I see one on there that had a $38 price tag on it and I checked it out and was really leery of buying it uh, suspicious of why it was so cheap so I looked at the seller reviews and they seemed to be okay and then I actually texted the seller to ask him why he was selling it so cheap and he told me that he only had a couple of these left and he wanted to get rid of them because he had some newer models coming in. So I figured uh, I'd buy it. I mean, it's, I wouldn't be losing anything if it would happen to be a scam or no good. I uh, get my money back within a couple of weeks as I always do for uh, any electronics I buy on this site. But anyway, I like the features that it has. It has uh, a built-in uh, 0 to 15.3 volt power out so you can test your motors in the amperage and then switch, the, switch over to the right here and it's a multimeter and it's just uh, self everything self-contained that's why I like it and I also like the uh, the temperature setting features that my other rework station doesn't have my other re rework station all it has was a dial this dial here is for the air setting but on my other one the dial was for the temperature and it wasn't real accurate I actually tested it with a heat gun and it was off so I'd, I'd have to use the heat gun to get it to the temperature that I wanted. So anyway I got this and I checked it all out and checked out the, the blower with my heat gun and it seems to be pretty much spot on as well as the DC power out. I checked it with my good multimeter and this you can adjust between 0 and 15.3 volts here and all the adjustments between that, I checked the power out and it, and it was the same on my multimeter or close enough, pretty spot on, as well as the, the voltmeter uh, is pretty spot on. So, so far it seems to be working the way it should and it works really good. Another thing I like about it is it gets up to heat within seconds compared to my other one. It took a couple of minutes to get up to the temp that I wanted. This actually jumps right up there pretty fast and so far it seems to be nice well I got looking around on YouTube to see if anybody had uh, this particular model and what they had to say about it and I found out that there is actually brand name models of this same same model number the 853d one of them is a Yui, you are something like that. And another one is a Mark Ethan. And between this one and the Mark Ethan, there is no difference really at all that I can see. The only difference is the Mark Ethan has vents on both sides of the cover, where mine only has a vent on the bottom and it has the Mark Ethan logo in front. That's the only difference I can see. On the other hand, the Yua, which is pretty much identical, different color, it's yellow and blue and red, um, is pretty much identical, only some of their models have a USB port, 
which this one doesn't. And also on the Ua, uh, I see on YouTube a guy had the top off, and his had a fan that sets right in back of that capacitor, or voltage regulator, whatever you want to call it. And I figured, well, if they, they put a fan in there, and then it, that must get pretty warm. So I figured, well, maybe I'll add my own fan. It wouldn't be that hard to do. That way I can be assured that it won't overheat. And I, <laughs> I have all kinds of fans and adapters, 12-volt adapters and electronics that I really didn't have to pay anything to buy anything. I had everything I really needed. So... What I did was I, I took a bimetal hole saw drill and I cut a hole in the cover here and it just happened to be that I had a, a hole saw that was pretty close to the size of that fan, close enough. So I popped a hole in that and I took a 12 volt fan, which looks like this I have a bunch of these I've got them out of projectors and just saved them figured they come in handy for something someday and in this case it did and there was two ways I could have hooked this up I could have hooked directly to the power source in the back here the DC out which is these two and then I could have uh, adjusted the, the setting to 12 volts and it would have worked that way. But I didn't want to use these. I wanted to keep these dedicated just for the purpose they were put there for. And I looked around for some other 12 volt sources on the circuit board here. And I couldn't find any. So I decided to put a 12 volt wall adapter in. And it was a... Uh, by the way, that motor is 1.8 amps, and that's pretty close to what that adapter is. So, what I did was I took the adapter and I siliconed it right to the back. I didn't glue it. In case I have to remove it, I could just rip it off. And I hardwired the plugs right into the, the AC power coming in off the switch which is back here so when I turn the power on the fan comes on I didn't have to have a, a separate switch for the fan so as soon as I turn that on the fan comes on and I was going to buy a vent online a screw on vent cover to keep the dust out dust cover and I looked around and I I seen this it's a magnetic dust cover and cost 10 bucks so that's yeah I, I went out and spent 10 bucks because looks pretty nice looks professional looks like it was uh, manufactured and so yeah I'm gonna try it out uh, there's a vent on the bottom of this so I'm sure that's going to be adequate enough for the exhaust, but we'll see when I get it back together. Uh, I'll continue this video to see how it works. Okay, I got it back together. That's what it looks like. But one thing I noticed was I turned it on. And it seemed to be working all right. It seemed to get pretty decent airflow on it. But I noticed when I removed the cover, the motor would relax. Put it back on and you can hear there's a drag on the motor. Well, it turns out that the mesh that they use on these magnetic covers is too fine. And it actually restricts the flow. Now it's, I think it would probably be an adequate enough airflow coming out to keep it cool. 
but I think over time, putting a stress on these little motors like that would probably make it crap out prematurely. So I decided to try to make my own cover, which I did. And that's uh, this here. I had a piece of leftover square ABS plastic quarter inch and I popped a hole in the middle of it, put it on my mini lathe and turned it down round, sanded it, and then I cut the middle out on it, on my lathe, and uh, I had some leftover screen from my screen door, black nylon screen, that I also, uh, I also recessed the back of this on my lathe to accept uh, the magnet. So I super glued the, the screen in first, and I went to Hobby Lobby and picked up some sheet magnet. This stuff here. Got a, a few of these for a couple of bucks. And uh, cut it out to size. And it's actually a self-adhesive, so I just stuck it on there over the screen. And now... There we go. Now you can tell it's got a little bit of restriction, just a very, very, very little uh, drag on the motor now compared to the other one. And I actually like this one better. The other one's uh, a gloss, has a gloss coating on it, but this one doesn't. <coughs> I was going to paint it, but uh, there's no need to because uh, the case itself is the same. The case isn't glossy either as this. It matches pretty good, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. And you can tell, you can just feel uh, coming from the bottom here, the difference in the air coming out. The exhaust is a lot better. So that's going to be better for the motor. and. Eh. came out pretty good I have a uh, 7x14 mini lathe that's great I use it a lot and they call kinds of stuff on it and, yeah. so I'm gonna consider this project complete